Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's little adventure, we're going to take another look at the thrift store Fujitsu point of sale system that we wanted to we wanted to do a little gaming on it, but it was kind of hard to do because anytime we put a PCI Express card into the PCI Express slot, um, the thing just refused to boot. And I'm not going to let it beat me. I know there's a way to do this. Uh, so we're going to we're going to give it our go. We're going to give it another go. We're going to try our hardest to get our GT730 working in it and maybe do a little gaming on it. Maybe. <laughs> that is if if we can actually get it to work. I've, I've done a little research on it and I, I keep coming back to the trusted platform module that's in it. I think it's keeping us from putting hardware in it that is not approved and I, I, I don't know this for certain but it's my best hunch. <laughs> so I did some snooping on the internet, um, mainly because I got this comment on the other video I made of this thing. And they said to try editing the BIOS. And well, I've never ever edited BIOS, never even looked into it before. So I needed to, I needed to do a little bit of research on it to give myself the best chance of not turning this point of sale system into a brick. <laughs> Cause if we ruin the BIOS on it, that's it for it. It's it's done so. It's going back to it's going back to the thrift store as a donation. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's get right into it. So I have to apologize. I'm not going to be doing screen recording on this. Uh, well, I I'm not going to be doing screen capture on this. We're going to just point the camera, you know, at the monitor and and press record because the BIOS in this does not like to run through Elgato capture um, card. We're just going to do it this, uh, you know early uh, early 2000s style here i found um and it took a little while to find because i didn't remember where i got it from but i found the the bios that i used um in the first video where we updated it in hopes that uh, it would fix uh, the issues we were having but uh, anyways this this did take a minute to find but i did find it so here's our bios file hro8.rom we're going to load it into am ibcp 4.55 there's this is not a tutorial on how to edit your BIOS. Let's get that out of the way because I know nothing about it. I only know what's working on this machine here and the version seven and five didn't work with this old BIOS, but 4.55 did. So we're going to open our BIOS and we get this nice little um, empty screen. So like I said, I, I, there's, there's all kinds of things that are hidden in this BIOS and, and that's the, the point of the AMI BCP um, program is to edit the BIOS and just enable features that are, are hidden from the end user. There, there is hundreds of things, well, I don't know about hundreds, maybe hundreds, I don't know, there's tons of stuff in here that the motherboard supports but it doesn't show the end user. And we're really not interested in a whole lot in here because I'm not I'm not going to be going in and, and overclocking or changing um, you know CPU settings and stuff like that or SATA or thermal or any of that. Um, really, I'm just interested in trusted computing, the TPM module. I'd like to turn it off in hopes that that will blanket. Um, that'll cover all my issues and allow me to put anything really I want to in this uh, motherboard. Whether or not it works, um, I'm kind of nervous because, like I said, if it, if this bricks it, it's that's it for it, and it'll be a a second boring video. Um, so the way this works, and I haven't run this yet. I just did some reading. All of these, you'll notice that it says show, and I, um, and they're all marked with yes, but that doesn't mean it's going to end up visible in our BIOS. We have to go into access use and change it to supervisor. You know, for that, for whatever feature we want to show up in the BIOS. So I want to go into advanced. I get all of this information or all of these options under advanced. And a lot of these absolutely is not, uh, what do you call it? It's not visible or viewable to the end user in the BIOS. Um, 
basically because they're all shut off because it's stuff that um, maybe the coding out isn't complete or this is a BIOS from a previous version and they've decided that like, something should or should not be shown anymore because maybe it does or does not work the right way. But it's all in there, accessible if you have the right tools and I hope I'm doing this right. We are mainly interested, like I said earlier, in trusted computing module, which is under advanced. I've, I've never done this before, so I'm sort of flying blind. But since trusted computing is not an option that I remember in the vanilla BIOS for this thing, we have to go, we should have to go into advanced, come down to trusted computing and enable it. And instead of default, it should be set to my understanding as supervisor. And what this will do is allow us um, to see the trusted computing tree or branch when we go into the BIOS. So at least that's my that's my hope because <laughs> again I, I don't want to break it but if it does it it breaks um and i don't know what the rest of this stuff is so we're gonna stay out so let's save this as okay it does save it as a rom file so let's call it hro or hr08 um underscore mod dot rom I wonder if they're supposed to all be capitals I don't know let's go ahead and do it save so and there's no point in saving the old one because I have a copy of it I have a copy of it already okay um <laughs> it's a little nerve-wracking because we might have just bricked it or clicking this one little button right here may have may it may brick it YOLO uh, that's when you were supposed to press flash oh, there we go. let's do it and it's done everything is gonna work perfectly until we res well I hope it works perfectly after we restart it but like even if you screwed up the, the BIOS, um, nothing will happen until you restart the computer. And that's when you'll know whether or not you bricked it. So start, power, restart. Look at that, look at that, look at that. All right, let's see what happens here. So that's going away, advanced, trusted computing. Yes. Oh, it's showing everything in here. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, all of those used to be there. So yeah, trusted computing. TPM support enable. Enable or disables TPM support. OS will not show TPM reset. All black. TPM state. So all of this shows now by just enabling the screen. So maybe I don't understand just enabling the screen shows me everything in there. Okay, um, like I said, this is the first time I've ever done this. I didn't know whether or not you have to turn on configuration to show TPM support, state, pending, current, you know, all that stuff through the BIOS uh, editor. But here we are, let's disable TPM support. And of course I ramble a lot in this because I'm sort of thinking out loud. Well, all of this is a good sign. Nice. So then, will that hardware under device manager, the trusted computing, will that be gone now? Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, now for the ultimate test. We're going to, well, I'm going to stick this in there and we'll see if we can boot the computer back up. Because if you remember right, when I would put the PCI Express card in there, you know, GPU into the PCI Express slot. Turn on the computer and we would just get a series of beeps no screen no nothing so this might uh this might do it i mean i'm getting excited over it. it's a, an i3 3120 but i mean it's it's the principle of the thing it's not supposed to have this in there and now we're going to make it be in there kind of excited okay get the gt 730 in there and now it is the moment of truth we're all hooked up we're all plugged in 
Let's hit that power button. Give us a beep. Hmm. Hey. That, oh my gosh, we got video. Holy cow, we got video. Holy cow. Look at this. Look at this. F2. F2, 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 F2. Are we are we stuck? Are we broke? Something's broke. Something's not happy. We are a, we are a step closer though. So we're we're close now. <laughs> we're close. Uh, trusted computing turning that off allowed us to boot. Well, get get a picture on the screen. And now I wonder if it has something to do with PCI subsystem. Well, maybe not PCI subsystem, but the PCI Express settings. Problem is in here, I don't know, I don't know what any of this means. Well, um, I have enabled the PCI Express settings um, option, so why don't we update the BIOS one more time and see if this does anything for us. So flashing a BIOS just because it worked once doesn't mean it'll work again and again and again and again and again. Um, every time you do press the flash button you do run a certain risk that it won't work this time. So hopefully we don't need to do this again. And honestly, when we get into the PCI Express subsystem um, folders in the BIOS, I, I don't really know what it is I'm going to do. Um, but hopefully we can figure it out. <laughs> okay, advanced. PCI subsystem. PCI Express settings. Some Googling here. EFI compatibility. So I changed the PCI Express, or no, uh, PCI boot ROM option from EFI to Legacy. And we have video now, but Windows isn't loading. In fact, it's not even giving me the little um, spinning dots. I'm gonna let this sit for, I don't know, a couple of minutes. I don't know, it could be installing drivers, it could be doing something weird, who, who knows. Uh, however, I'm gonna give it a few minutes and if it doesn't, uh, if it doesn't boot, <clears throat> well, well, We'll do some more searching. While in the BIOS with our uh, GT730 in there, I'm noticing things move kind of slow. You can see it drawing to the screen. So something still not right. All right, we're into Windows with the graphics card, with the, with the GPU. So what I did is I went into the BIOS and I I turned off extended sync. I turned off ASPM support, which extended sync was probably what was slowing us down. Let's do a little experiment here. So this is how it was set up uh, a minute ago when it wouldn't get into Windows. Uh, minus extended sync, I had that enabled. Uh, Disabling it seems to have gotten us uh, into Windows at least. Um, but I also disabled all of these things and everything that I read, this is all, you know, good. Um, you know, your power management, relaxing order, um, extended tag. Everything I read about these online says these are a good idea to uh, enable. Uh, extended sync was also a good one to enable, but um, what this extended sync does, as far as I know, it's a overclocking um setting and it doesn't overclock your pci express what it does is it makes sure that if you were to inc increase your front side bus or your um, clock speeds or, or basically if you overclock your cpu it doesn't overclock your pci express um it looks like the ones that get you into windows is to use um the legacy rom and uh 
and to also use the, um, or not to use the extended sink. And we're in, we're in with a GPU. This, uh, these are exciting times. Let me connect this thing up to the internet and we'll get drivers for it. We'll do some tests, we'll run some benchmarks. Okay, you can probably hear it in the background, but the uh, GT730 in there is, well, it's chooching away. The fan on it is running at about 83%. We're up at 75 degrees and um, I'm gonna let it sit here for about 15 minutes and run full tilt in heaven benchmark and see if it gets really any hotter. Um, I'm, I'm guessing this is gonna get up to about 82 degrees. Uh, the GT730 will get up to about 82 degrees. Um, hopefully it won't go any higher than that because that's kind of the limit on where I like a graphics card to, to run. Um, just because it gets to that temperature though in Unigen uh, heaven, doesn't mean it would do it in say like Team Fortress 2 or um, you know Minecraft or something like that. Because it's probably not gonna be running 100% full tilt like uh, heaven makes it do. So we're gonna just let this thing run and cook and see if things stay under control as far as temperatures go. Um, the case has terrible airflow through it so after about two passes of uh, Unigen's Heaven, we have hit a max of 83 degrees, which isn't awful, given the circumstances of, you know, how kind of poor the case uh, flows air and um, the fact that, that uh, the GPU is like mashed right up against the side of that case. So there's not a lot of airflow in there. But I, I don't think it's gonna, you know, I don't think it's gonna burn up. So let's close this out. And let's run a Cinebench or two and make sure the CPU can stay cool enough. All right, I'm gonna run Cinebench R15 three times, like I usually do, get things nice and toasty in there, and we'll see what our highest score is and our highest temps. See you in, oh, I don't know, five minutes. Finishing up our last run, 275 was our highest. This last one was 274, and we reached a max temperature of 71 degrees on the package so even though the case is terrible as far as airflow goes it's it didn't get too hot um but it is a 2120 it doesn't make a ton of heat um its tdp is very low i say now that we know that it uh isn't going to cook itself we take and we throw our eight gigs of ram back into it that I, I ended up taking these out when uh i realized i couldn't get the graphics card working but now that we have it working <laughs> we can put in some more RAM and goodies. And then um, I do have this i5-2400 laying around. We could slap that in there. And that's probably the extent of what we can put in here. I can't imagine, like an i7 will probably go in there and, and boot up, but um, the power delivery of the motherboard probably isn't set up for an i7. It's probably set up for like a max of like 70, um, like a, a, a processor with like a max of 70 TDP. Um, but this is just me guessing and there's very little uh, documentation on, on this board out in the wild. It, um, I actually couldn't even find one of these um, spec'd out anywhere to buy, you know, looking at old websites with an i5 in it. But I'm, I'm guessing it can do the i5, not a problem. Who wouldn't want to make a point of sale system as powerful as can be so we can run games and stuff on it. It's what we do around here. So the CPU's in, the eight gigs of RAM are in, and we are ready to fire this up. So just a quick recap, this came factory or stock with four gigs of RAM. It had an i3-2120, three point, what are they, like 3.3 gigahertz. And we just put an i5-2400 in it. Uh, 3.4 gigahertz, not a huge jump up in processing power, but we have four cores, four threads versus two cores, two threads now. And we have a working PCI Express slot with a dedicated GPU in it. I'd like to get a GT1030 in there, um, but this is what I had laying around. So let's see if she boots up because that's a whole lot of different stuff. But now without the TPM module enabled in there, it shouldn't care. It should just fire right up. my finger there we go 
So, yep, i5-2400, 8 gigs of DDR133. Heck yeah. All right. So we're wrapping up the final run of my uh, trio of tests here. Just wanted to make sure that that i5 wasn't going to overheat or run, um, you know, you know, unreliably. And would you look at that? We hit a peak of 66 degrees on the package, which if you remember, the i3-3120 was like 71. So not only uh, do we have more cores, but it runs cooler, which is nice. And um, with a score of 416, we beat our old score by, what, um, 130 points? 140 points? I don't mean to brag. Mama always taught me to be, you know, humble. But I believe I own the fastest Team POS 7000F Fujitsu point of sale system in the world. <laughs> What can we do with such power? I tell you what, we can run, we run heaven here. Now this probably isn't gonna increase. Um, if you remember the first couple of scenes last time, uh, I was running about 10 FPS. We're probably not gonna get a whole lot more performance out of the 3D aspect of it, but uh, the, um, you know, CPU rendering, computation, stuff like that, uh, we got a nice little boost. So, yeah, FPS 10. Pretty on par with that um, 3120. And I think the limiting factor here is the GT730. All right, well, any hoo-ha, let us try playing a game or two. As you can see from this footage of me playing some Minecraft here, um, this GT730 really isn't up to the task of playing some of today's modern games that are, you know, kind of on the low end, because it's just, it's just not up to snuff. It's, it's only got two gigs of RAM, and I believe it's like the DDR3 RAM version. It's not a great card. However, if we stuffed a 1030 in there, which of course we could do because we've unlocked the slot, turned off trusted computing and all that, we'd be able to play... I wouldn't have any doubt that this couldn't play Valorant or something like that. And yeah, it's not going to play it at 160 frames a second, but easily 30 to 60. So I don't think there's any reason to kind of take any more game footage with this current configuration. But saying that, we did accomplish what we set out to do, which was seeing if we could upgrade this machine into a usable system. And it absolutely can be pretty happy with the results. That being said, I'd like to take a second to thank Fayaz for suggesting that I do look into modding the BIOS. Like I said, it was something I've never done before and uh, it was kind of a daunting task at first, especially knowing that you can brick your machine with it, but um, it came out all right in the end and now we have a working system that we can do all kinds of fun stuff with. And on that note, I uh, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed what we did here today, uh, please leave me a like. And if you didn't like it, please leave me a dislike. And if you'd like to see more of this kind of weird stuff in the future, go ahead and click that subscribe button, and I'll be sure to bring you more goofy stuff like buying thrift store point-of-sale systems and modifying their BIOSes so we can stick GPUs in them. Again, thanks very much. I'll see you next time.